wanna take a minute and talk about some of the surprises that seem to pop up when you're building a home. And these are some of the, some of the unforeseens. And one of the big ones is the dirt work. That seems to always surprise people. And, and I explain a lot of the time that, that excavation is a lot like remodeling. Sometimes you get into the soil and find things that you didn't know were there. Just like on a remodel, you tear off the sheetrock and find that there's dry rot or mold or water damage or, or maybe there's lack of insulation that needs to be put in. Whatever, whatever the surprise might be, you didn't know that it was there until you got into the project and got started. Another, another thing is, I guess the example of that is in earthwork, you might get into your excavation and find that the soil has changed. Whether it be it's, it's too rocky and hard that's gonna require drilling and blasting or hammering of that rock to get it out in order to get your foundation to go where it needs to go. Um, and that can happen not only with the foundation, but it can happen with the utilities around the house, whether it's a power line or a water line. Um, there can be a lot of surprises. Even drilling a well is, is a bit of a gamble and a roll of the dice. Just like pulling off that sheetrock, you're not sure what you're going to find when you get into it. So I want to talk a little about some of the surprises that you can find out there and how to hedge your bets against that as you start building a house. The big thing that I tell people is before you start a project, go, go tear some of that sheetrock off. Look in there, see what you're up against. And you can do the same thing with dirt work by going out and either digging potholes and looking at the soil to better understand what's on the property and what you might be up against. Because a couple of thousand dollars to have an excavator come out and get a, a soils engineer out on site to do a site observation is seems like a lot of money. Two thousand dollars that maybe you don't have to spend. And maybe you roll the dice and it, and it works out and everything goes fine and you save the two thousand dollars. But more times than not I have I have started into a project or seen people start into a project and they haven't forgive my my example pulled the sheetrock off the wall and even a small chunk to look and see what's in there and then are met with with huge surprises and and ex, and extreme expense hammering rock or increasing footings or whatever it might be I've got a project that we're working on right now where digging a basement, excavating out for the basement on the side of a hill, and the plans call for an eight foot foundation wall. Well, the issue is is that, that the steepness there, or the grade, there was a lot of fill material that was put in there. And so in order to get down to native on the uphill basement wall, that uphill wall is going to have to be 10 foot tall. And that 10 foot tall, that 10 foot tall wall is going to have to be a foot thick and it's going to need a double mat rebar and five foot wide footings. And in, in order to, to stand that wall up and then support the pressure of the dirt behind it. And that's just what it took to get that, that house down on native ground and, and off of the, the fill. Now there were some other options like bringing in structural fill and building back up to raise it back up, um, but the decision was made that having taller, taller ceilings in the basement and more daylight that came into that walkout basement was, was better than bringing in structural fill and compacting and lifting the whole house up. So there again, you get into the project and, and I don't know... Um, it's probably going to add twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars in additional cost to that house that is not in the in the bank budget. It, it's it's a complete surprise. And if we're talking about building even a, a half a million dollar house, we we might be adding close to ten percent by by the time we get everything added on and increased for that particular issue of finding where the native ground was. Now, certainly could have gone in earlier. 
potholed everything, looked at the soil everywhere, created a map, had an engineer there, and gotten a better understanding of what was down there. And, and w the decision could have been made before the start of the house instead of during the house project. So it could have been a huge savings. Some of the other surprises that can pop up when building a house can happen typically outside the home. For example, there's issues like uh, we talked a little bit about wells. Well, the well can be a huge surprise. Um, you just never know when you set out to drill a well if it's going to be if it's going to be shallow and lots of water, or if it's going to be super deep and expensive and and very very little water. We've talked about in other videos that even even a short distance apart that you can have very different results in drilling a well. So that's a big one that. That's a, that's a budget or a line item that you should add a lot of contingency into. And when I say contingency, I mean, okay, we've gotten an estimate from a drill, from the, from the driller, from the well drill guy, from the well driller, um, and it's $20,000. Let's call it thirty dollars just in case. Let's leave additional wiggle room in there, and that way, hey, if... If we don't have to use it, fantastic, um, but at least it'll be there. Not alone this morning. Got all sorts of these Canadian geese that are out here. I guess they're not geese, they're goose. Eh? It's the goose. Um, so the, the well's a big one. Septic can be another big one. Again, you're, you're, you're even with a perk test and coming out and looking at it and, and figuring out what the soil type is, there can still be surprises um, down the road. And so, um, for example, if you decide, hey, while we're here, uh, let's, let's finish that room over the garage and have a bonus room, well, what are the consequences with that? Maybe that means that we have to upgrade our drain field and our septic to support that additional bedroom. And so those are things that as, as, you're, as you're in a project and you're making changes that there can be surprises that, that affect the entire, the entire cost of the project. Um, other things that can be surprise, a surprise is landscaping. Um, you, get in, you get into a house and you build a house and before it was a hay field and water and runoff, the ground would typically soak that water up. As soon as you build that house, you've got this impervious surface, meaning that it's going to shed water and there's going to be a lot of water focused into to one location or, or a couple of locations. And suddenly that's going to t change where water flows on that property, especially as you put that house there. Um, and so there might be that, hey, we need to put in downspouts, we need to get gutters put in. Um, sometimes gutters are a good thing, sometimes they're not, um, depending on the style of your house, the look that you want. Uh, but getting those downspouts, collecting that water off the roof, it's a really good idea to do a downspout drains, catch that water, be able to channel it away, going where you want it to go instead of just letting it go wherever it decides to go in hopes that it just runs away from the house. So those are some of the surprises that I see with a lot of folks. They, they put the house in and they get a few rainstorms and suddenly they've got puddles here and ponds there and, and water's running here and washing things out and creating all sorts of issues. So that's typically another, another area where I see people get surprised with their budget on their house. They didn't budget for, their, for the downspouts and the drains and, and the piping and the additional grading around the house and here it is the end of the job the, the the budget is spent and so i would encourage you to have a contingency for a storm water management plan for the house which includes whatever it's going to take to get that water away from the house put it where you want it to go instead of just letting it surprise you the next time you get a big rainstorm or 
a warm warm spring day and all, all of a sudden the snow on your roof decides to all melt at once so those are those are other places where I people I see people get surprised and the budget gets hit hard um, the other is the I don't know exactly it, it's the while we're here syndrome um, that seems to get a lot of people which is hey while we're here let's just add this and while we're here ah, it's gonna be more expensive to come back later let's just do this and there seems to be this this scope creep meaning we were focused on this and now we're focused on this and and that scope creep seems to affect people's budgets and suddenly you've blown the budget and and you're having to come out of pocket to pay for stuff or you're having to go back to the bank and say hey um, we'd like to borrow some more money pretty please and that can take a lot of time it, it can hurt scheduling it, it could affect your builder uh, the sub scheduling just not a place that you want to be so really take the time up front to think through the entire process of the house and look at where the surprises where the pitfalls might be whether they're something that you find or or something that you might create or inadvertently create hey I'm uh, I was I, I put in these attic trusses I'm gonna go ahead and finish them while I'm here well you know why don't you wait a few years save up some cash and do that later on as opposed to doing it right now uh, because you're still not done with the house and there still might be other surprises um, that might pop up before you get things done so those are some of the things that, that I see people building houses get get surprised by or hung up on um, it's either the stuff you can't see or the stuff that you do to yourself and it doesn't seem like a big deal you know, a little here and a little there but you get to the end of the project and you look at the budget and you're like holy cow we spent an extra eighty seven thousand dollars a thousand dollars at a time but it all adds up and and it it can kill a budget and so keep your keep you know keep keep your 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 scope of work that you want to do very specific your budgets make sure that they will cover those items that you want to do and always build in a contingency into your budget for different items especially those ones where you are likely to see a surprise like on earthwork or um, the well or septic or or in some of those add-ons that you might want to do while you're there so please put down in the comments some of the your experiences that you've had while building uh, some of the surprises that 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 you had pop up things that you didn't see coming that that added to your budget and It'll be fun to read through those and see other people's experience and, and what they've learned while they were building their houses If you're in North Idaho and working on a project if you need some help or just Just have some questions feel free to reach out um, Like I said, it's been great with this social media to be able to meet people and to, to learn. Again, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below and we'll see you on the next video.